when the Holy Spirit begins pouring into you. Um, and it's, it's actually one of the things that I, I encourage people. You know, you got to dig your well. And, and sometimes people come along and they don't dig their well. And they're wondering, you know, they may have moments, moments of anointing. You know, they'll be, be like surprised. Like, oh, somebody got healed. And they'll be like, oh, you know, maybe God is on me. But it's, but it's, but it's kind of really random. And um, it's, it, it's supposed to be, of course, For all of our lives, it should be, of course. He's in me, he's on me, he's, he, he's all over me, his spirit is. But there's a piece of that that you got to dig your own well. And I know that as, as a teenager, uh, as a young man, I learned to dig my well. I would spend time with the Lord. I began digging the well, I began reading the Bible, began learning, began asking the questions that... Um, that sound really stupid when you ask the same questions when you're 50 that you could have asked when you were 15. But you, you, you didn't ask those questions. So now you got to ask questions because you don't understand. You know, how does the Holy Spirit do that? And why is that happening? You know, why, what is this? You know, why are those guys' eyelids fluttering? Why, what, what, is anything happening? Have you, do you see the color change on that person? What's going on? Um, you know, why, why do people fall? Most people don't even know this. But, you know, falling didn't always happen in the church. It did happen in some revivals. It happened at Cane, Cane um, Ridge Revival. They invited, they thought there would be 200 people, and they had somewhere between 20 and 40,000, 45,000 people that showed up for a meeting. That's, I, I'm hoping that's going to happen next month for us. No, I'm joking. Um, um, but uh, but in, that, in that particular meeting, the Holy Spirit came in such power they, that there was a reporter who actually crawled into the battlefield, is what he said. It looked like a battlefield. There were bodies laying everywhere. Um, there was a little girl sitting on somebody's shoulders preaching, um, like a little girl. Um, there, were, there were people preaching from trees. They didn't have sound systems in those days, so you kind of preached for as far as you could reach. And, um, but they, literally the Holy Spirit just came in, very, in great power. But most, m- most of the modern-day falling... Um, uh, didn't begin till really in the um, late 70s, early 80s. And what happened was, um, was that when it first began, because one of the things that happened in California, I know where, where, where I had um, uh, come through, when people would fall, nobody caught them. And the reason they didn't catch them, because they just thought, evidently, God wants them on the floor. Uh, they didn't move to catch them, even after they began falling. Um, there were times in those days, I remember falling and hitting my head really hard on chairs and everything else. It never hurt. Nothing ever hurt. The issue came in um, when people thought, oh, it shows power if you fall. And so it was like, we have to manifest this, that falling is an, a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And so they would fall, and, and people who actually were not falling by the Spirit were falling on people who had fallen by the Spirit. And in fact, in, in our, our uh, church that we had in South Carolina, uh, one guy got fallen on a good friend of mine uh, uh, and uh, broke three of his ribs um, in the process because the guy thought, oh, I'm supposed to fall. So he fell on this poor guy who was laying down there. And, um, and so at that point, you go, we need catchers. But we don't need catchers for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit doesn't need to get caught. No, it's just, it's the people that, that respond. But there are things that you can begin growing by the Spirit early on, but you've got to dig your well. And so when I was joking with Gene, I, and, and I said, you, you ain't got nothing? Because he's a well digger. And, and by that, I mean, he, he's walked with the Lord, he's known the Lord, he's been through stuff. Um, and, and you learn those things. Those are the valuable things. That's why... That's why it, you, you would find it rare for me to have notes in front of me. Do you know why? I used to have notes. I used to study 40 hours a week for one message. I had reams of notes. But after a while, it's like, I don't need to read these things. I need to have these things. So what if I can speak about it? I want to own it. I want to become a part of my life. I want to speak out of my life. And the anointing in your life 
is going to come from you speaking out of life. It's not going to be because I got a message and I got to deliver this message. And everybody sits there bored and you wonder, why did nothing happen? You know, I really felt like this was powerful. Well, it might have been powerful for you, and I'm glad it was on the paper for you, but it wasn't powerful for anyone else because you thought you had to deliver something, but what God wanted to do is to deliver something through you. And so you, there's something that, that happens from digging your wells. I want to encourage you, dig your wells. Dig them. And I'm not, I'm not against notes. Don't, don't hear that. I used notes for many years. But, but I understood that really the anointing, the power comes when you don't have to rely on what you think you've got to remember. You rely on the Holy Spirit because he's in you. He breathes through you. I cannot imagine Jesus carrying a laptop around or a, an iPad. Hold on, i got to get this message right. <laughs> or a big pad. You know, big, can you imagine Jesus with binders? Scrolls. <laughs> Each of his disciples had to carry three scrolls each, you know, notes for his next message for the Sermon on the Mount. And um, he spoke what he heard his father. And the well, the well is the father's place. The well is where you go, ah, I listen to my father. I tell you what my father says. I don't really want to tell you more than what my father says because it's really stupid. It's true. Gene, you got something? If you don't, that's fine. Huh? All right. So now I want to ask you something, and I'll be really honest with you. I'm, I'm, and I don't mind being honest. It's okay. I, I learned a long time ago that I learned to laugh at myself. I mean, I couldn't believe I broke my guitar string first song. I'm like, Jesus, you are making this so hard on me tonight. Because literally this afternoon, Karen will tell you, this is true. I said, I got nothing. I just got a text from Abby. My voice is gone. I won't be able to help with worship. She says, I'll play, but I can't, can't lead. And I already knew that Rhea was taken out. And I'm like, because she's, she's been sick. And I'm like, what? And I'm, I, I'm going through my filing cabinet. I'm going, there ain't nobody I can call this late. This is just not even fair, God. I haven't played in a while. And not only that, the stuff that Karen was sharing, there was war, there were things that were happening. And it's funny, people were just like, you know, where, where does this stuff come from? It's like, it better come from him because right now there ain't, there's nothing on the sh shelf. <laughs> there's nothing, nothing, nothing anywhere. It's got to come from him. But here's what I know. That when we worship him, See, worship isn't for us. It's not our party. It, it's not for us to enjoy. Really, ever. We can enjoy it, the fact that he's here. But really, worship is about giving something to him. And so when you pour out, for some reason, he comes. When you give, he says, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I want to touch you. Now, the Lord's been dealing uh, with me about a number of things just recently. And I've, I've shared a few things. I don't know if I shared anything here. I, honestly, I can't remember where I was when I began sharing. But, you know, there have been some experiences I've had with the Lord that to me are so valuable. And I think I shared this a little bit last week and prayed for people last week about this. Because sometimes what happens is we, we short circuit what the Holy Spirit really wants to do because we got to get moving. We got to go do something else. We got to shift gears. We got to go somewhere. But the Lord doesn't want us to shift gears sometimes. Sometimes He says, I just want you to remain with me. Can you abide in me? Can you, can you stay here? Can you stay here? Two of my favorite passages. One is where in the book of Zechariah, it talks about these four horses. It sounds like a crazy thing for a favorite passage, but these four horses come through these big bronze mountains, and it speaks directly of judgment that's coming. And um, 
you know, sometimes when we think of judgment, we think that God, it, it is God coming against. But when Daniel speaks of judgment, he actually says, God, we know we're under judgment as he's praying to the Lord. We know we're under judgment because we're scattered and we're divided. That actually the manifestation of judgment is not God coming against. It's, in fact, the reality that there are so many things, so many factions that are happening between us. We don't understand the beauty. That's why it says how wonderful, how awesome it is for brethren to dwell in unity. Are you with me? And so, so many times we think of judgment as God's bringing something else. And actually, sometimes we are living in judgment because we don't experience the fullness of what Jesus really has for us. You with me? And so Daniel speaks of that. But then in Zechariah, you read about these two big mountains. Those mountains are governments of judgment. And it says, and four horsemen came through there. And it spoke of different things. But the last, but the, but the one it spoke of, it says, the black horse went to the north. And it gave rest to the Spirit of God in the north. And it's funny, if you don't notice it, you kind of miss it. But you go, what do you mean it gave rest? What does it mean to give God rest? You know, Jesus said, he said, the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Isaiah says, heaven is my throne. Earth is my footstool. Where? Where, 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 can, I, where can I rest? Where can God find rest in us? And there's a place he wants that is a place of rest in each of us. And it's not about trying to figure it out religiously and say, I'm doing good, so therefore he finds rest. The rest of the Lord is that ability to flow, to move by the Spirit. You know, John chapter 3, you know, that verse that we all quote. Anybody can quote? For God so loved the world. It's the salvation passage. It's that you must be what? Born again, right? It's where Nick comes to Jesus at night. This Pharisee, and he says to, he says to Jesus, he says, how do you do these things? I, I was given teaching at the highest level. I understand. See, what we don't understand is that rabbis... Today, rabbis. Rabbis believe that when the Holy of Holies was set up, that curtain was somewhere between 6 and 12 inches thick. Thick. There was no seam. No opening. As they come up to the Holy of Holies, they're holding a candelabra. And they're holding a bowl a blood that they're going to pour out on the mercy seat. I want you to think about this. They're in front of a curtain that is impenetrable by just pushing through. You don't slide under a, a curtain like that. And they believed, and they teach this, that you worship until you're in. Let me say that again. See, they're taught. See, they actually believe in the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They believe in the God of Moses. They believe, they believe that he is a God who does supernatural things. There is no question to them. We, we, we come from a very different perspective. Like, will God? I hope he does. It'd be awesome if he did. You know, it'd be cool if God touched somebody. But that's not how they're taught. They're taught because he is the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. The God who opened the way through the wilderness, the God who opened the Red Sea, the God who, who drowned the Egyptians in a moment, the God, the God who brought fire down with Elijah and, and raised the dead. They, they just believe that. That is something that is common. It's, it's where we, as a, as a people, God is trying to bring us there. You know, we, we quote that verse all the time in Romans where it says, it says, all of creation is desperately waiting for what? 
the sons of God to be revealed. Why is creation waiting for that? They're waiting for, for a people that actually get it. They go, wow. They're waiting for a people that go, ah, of course. This is supposed to happen. This is not our focus. This just happens. When we walk with God, we don't need to focus on supernatural. When we walk with God, the overshadowing of God himself releases the manifestation of his presence everywhere we are. That when, we're, when we begin understanding that we're sons of God, some people have a real struggle with that. They go, you know, Jesus, he was the son of God. And we go, yeah, he was the son of God. It's like, no, we are sons of God. He was our elder brother. He paved the way, showed us perfectly how to do it. That's what he did. But we, are, we should be, well, of course, John 3 again. Jesus, I went to all the right schools. I knew about the miracles. I understood. But, but it's like you're doing them. We can't do them. We just kind of hope that they happen. And most believers today live in that same frame of mind. And it's amazing because we, we constantly say, you know, you must be born again. And so we have, we have propagated a gospel that basically, if you say this prayer, you're born again. Problem is, is that born again requires a renewal and a change of your mind, your heart, your spirit, and everything about you. It's not by just saying a prayer. Born again is not just a matter of, I'm going to say the prayer, now I'm born again. And we tell people that. You know, if they say the prayer, you're now born again. They go, wow, I don't feel any different. Don't believe in any different, don't see any different. Nicodemus was there for the answer. He said, how do you do this stuff, man? And he says, well, you got to be born again. What? I can't go back in my mom. What are you talking about? He said, well, you got to be born of the water and the spirit. you got to be born by amniotic fluid. But you got to be born by the spirit. You have to be birthed. I'm going to go there a little bit. See, there's something that happens when we are birthed by the spirit. It, it's funny, in the old days, in the old Pentecostal days, they used to have, they, they had these benches, they... Anybody remember the name of the benches? Tarian. And, 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 and you would go and you would sit in this one area until you, and you would tarry. Like, you know, tarrying basically for the, you're like, I'm not a terror, I'm, I'm wheat. You know, no, but tarrying is basically just wait. And it's where you wait. What are you waiting for? You're waiting for the time. You're waiting for the moment when the Spirit of God comes on you and you recognize, I'm ready to be born now. Something is different. This is not a decision I'm making. This is his presence coming on me. And they would wait there until they could feel the presence of God coming on them, until they began experiencing some of the things that are supposed to be a part of our lives ongoing. Because when the Spirit of God comes on you, you should know it. It's not something that you go, I think I got something. I said the prayer. Somebody prayed for me. You know, I called about that. They told me to say, la, 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 la. And I got my tongue. And that's what my tongue has ever been. La, la, la. But you begin waiting on the spirit. And you begin understanding. I, God, I'm waiting for you. I shared last week with you about, about Roland and Heidi and how Heidi had this incredible encounter with, the, with God. And Roland didn't have that encounter and got frustrated I remember calling them, uh, calling them once. I called Roland and I said, hey, I said, I'd like to have you and Heidi. He says, you don't want me. You want Heidi. <laughs> he says, nobody wants me. He says, they want Heidi. But there was a period of time where he went and went into the bush bush and said, I'm not coming back until something happens to me. He went to go tarry. He went to go wait. He went to go say, God, touch me or I'll die See, that, that part of walking with the Holy Spirit is so critical that we've missed. We've missed it. We've made things magical. If I just touch you, you get my anointing. If I touch you, somehow you get my mantle. If I touch you, somehow you're going to get, you're going to get filled with the Spirit and it's going to be all done. And, and, and we've used it like magic and we've missed the point of John 3. You got to be born like a, like a baby, but you're going to go through a birth 
in the spirit that has to be as equally as powerful and brings you into a brand new reality. It's where you look outside and you realize, man, the grass is greener on a rainy day. It's where you begin understanding that joy is not, is not mine because <laughs> I'm having everything nice around me. But that you in your sufferings can rejoice. It's where you begin understanding that the kingdom of God is, is full of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That you begin understanding that my circumstances do not dictate to me whether or not I'm filled with the Spirit. I'm filled with the Spirit on all occasions. That's why Paul can say, I pray on all occasions. I pray more than you all. I pray at all times. I pray without ceasing. Guess how often I talk to God? It's not an often word. It's a non-ceasing word. I pray, I'm praying right now. My spirit is praying right now. While I'm speaking, my spirit is still praying. Guess, guess how I'm seeing the Holy Spirit? While I'm talking and praying, my eyes, I'm seeing. There are things I'm seeing happening in the spirit. While all this is happening, why? Because I went through a birth. I went through something where I said, God, I got to have you. I need you. I need something of you. The story of D.L. Moody is an awesome story. D.L. Moody was the greatest preacher during his era. Preached to more people than anybody else. He'd be kind of like the, the equivalent of a, of a Billy Graham or, or Reinhard Bonka. Um, except, well, I won't even go there. But of, of his era. And there were these two ladies... At his meetings, they would always come. They'd always sit on the front row. And they'd kind of enjoy the meeting. And then as soon as he started preaching, they would start praying. Like, it was like they were ignoring him. And he got irritated. Because they kept doing it over and over and over and over. He was in Chicago at the time. And he was like, what is your, you know, and he, he said, what is, what's the deal? Why do you always... Pray. You don't listen to my messages at all. He says, we are praying the Holy Spirit will come on you, uh, Mr. Moody. What? He said, I have the largest meetings in the world. You don't think I have the Holy Spirit? We're praying for you, Mr. Moody. There was a great fire that happened in, um, in Chicago. It's called the Great Fire of Chicago. And uh, it's kind of humorous, some of the things that happened. His wife grabs us. He had this big portrait painted of, of, of him. They, they'd had this huge portrait. And at, at the fire, his wife says to him, says, uh, hands him the big portrait. I mean, huge. He says, here, you carry this. And they're running down the street. He's holding a picture of himself. <laughs> but, <laughs> it was pretty funny. But, I mean, there were some humorous things in his life. But, but, um, but at that point, he had to go come back east to, to New York, and he's in New York in a, ho in a hotel. And he was supposed to be raising money for what was going on in, uh, in Chicago to rebuild. And he said he went to his hotel room, and he said he just, he was sick. He was like, no, I, no, I need, I need God. And he began tarrying. He began, God, I need you. I don't care about money. I don't care about the buildings. I don't care about everything else. I, I need you. I got to have you. God, I got to have you. And it says that what happened in that room, there was a birthing that took place. And he says the, the God came. It was like liquid. This love pouring over him, very similar to the, to the thing that happened to Moody, or to, to uh, Charles Finney, very similar. But he says he came in such power that he eventually had to ask the Lord to stay his hand. He said, I can't take anymore. My question for us is, have we ever let the Lord take us to the point and experiencing his power coming on us where we say, I can't handle any more. 
This is way too crazy. See, what happens when there's a birthing, what happens when there's a, a birthing of the Spirit? And it's very, very interesting because in that passage in, in John 3, it goes on. You know what it says? Love you guys. Glad to have you back. Really glad. Really good to see you, Rebecca. Wow. Haven't seen her in forever. So good. Um, he says, um, you got to be born again. You got to be born of the water and the spirit. And, and the next part, the next verse just kind of always freaked me out. It's like every pastor I ever knew, every, every teacher, they always miss this part. The wind blows where it wills. Anybody, you, you kind of go, okay, we're getting a little bit fruit loopy. What, what are you talking about, Jesus? And he says, so does everyone who's born of the Spirit. Huh. You know, the wind has, it's not subject to anything. It's not subject to conditions. Well, I mean, obviously in the natural, there are weather patterns and things like that, but, but it's not like you look and you see a hand pushing the wind. All of a sudden, the wind comes from a direction that might be different than what you thought it was going to come, and the wind's blowing. See, what happens is when, when you are born again, when you are birthed by the Spirit of God, what happens is you begin realizing, I'm not obligated to my circumstances my situation, my surroundings, and the environment that is here. I'm not in a place where I have to respond to all the elements in order to respond by the Spirit. Wow, we grew. Are you with me? Let me say that again just so you catch that. When the Spirit of God completely fills you, Let me back up. John Wimber, who was my pastor, taught a great teaching that really was error. I love John. I love John. He was really my pastor. I really love him. But there was one verse he taught, and taught it through an entire generation, John 5.19. And John 5.19 says this, that it says that the Son of Man uh, can only do what he sees the Father doing. And the Lord spoke to me. He says, yeah, that's not correct. I said, what do you mean? And see, what, what he raised was a generation that was always looking. What's the Holy Spirit doing? Oh, what's he doing? What's he doing in the room right now? What's he really doing? And so you're kind of looking for the hot spot. You're looking for the person shaking. You're looking for the person with the glow. You're looking for, for somebody that's, wow, oh, something's happening with them. And you go, oh, that's where the Lord's moving. Am I... Am I Am I correct? And so you look and you go, that's what God's doing. But the Lord says, you got to go back to John 5, 17. And you got to go back to the context. The context is that Jesus heals a man. The Pharisees are angry. They're going, dude, could you pick another day to heal the sick? Quit healing the sick on the Sabbath. We won't be as mad at you, but you keep doing this on the Sabbath. John 5, 17 says, my father is always working. How often? The son is not willing that any should perish. How many people do you think God is after in your life? All of them. When do you think God's after them? Now. Now. My, my father is always working and is working even in this hour. The son can only do what he sees the father doing. It's a total flip. It's like, oh my gosh. You begin realizing, you mean we can do this all the time? That's right. Why? Because the wind blows where it will. So does anyone by the Spirit of God. That when you begin at grasping that, you begin understanding, God has put his Spirit inside of me. And as a result, I am, I am not obligated by circumstances or somebody speaking to me and saying, could you tell me about Jesus, please? Or, you know, would you mind praying for me? I'm sick. 
or the obvious, you know, something's, ha- it's, it's, you begin touching people. It's one of the reasons we have this value in here where we, and it freaks people out because in the middle of our worship, people are getting prayer and people are like, you, got, you know, you got to have some kind of order. It's like, this is order. This is heavenly order. This is how God orders everything. God orders that everything can be done at all times. God wants everything done decently and in order. Problem is, is that we've missed the everything done. And all we've done is kept the sterility decently. And it's a human decently. It's not a heavenly decently. Because if my father is always working, that means God's doing something right now. Guess how many people God's doing something on right now in this room? Every single one of you. They're all different things, but God's doing something. And so when Jesus finishes with Nick, he goes, Nick, he says, listen, the spirit goes where it wants. So does everyone who is born of the spirit. When you have really cultivated and said, God, I need you. I need the Holy Spirit in my life. I need your power. I need to move by, you, by what you're speaking, what you're breathing. I need to be able to see what's happening in the room. I need to be able to hear your voice. I need to be, how can you speak what the Father's speaking if you can't even hear his voice? Some of us want ministry. We don't, we, have, we, we don't understand. Ministry is not an occupation. It's a life. Ministry is called service. It's serving people in the world with whatever is necessary to serve. Jesus came to give his life as a servant. He was the greatest servant And so that's how it happens. Enough. Let's let's just ask the Holy Spirit to come. So some of you may want to tarry. Some of you got somebody giving you the la, 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 la. Or you once in a while have seen a random, wow, that's cool. But there's a place where you get to press in. And you get to say, Holy Spirit, come on me. I'm sitting on this tarry bench. I'm waiting. I want to get nuked by you. I want to be overdone. I want you to totally cook me. I want you to ruin me. I want when I come out of here to not see anybody the same. Not people in my family, not people in the world, not my neighbors, not anything about me. I want to see people differently. I want to see what you see. I want, and, and Because see, judgments grow out of what we see. But mercy grows out of what he sees. Compassion is what heals, not your righteous anointing. (laughs) Are you with me? Come on, open your hands up. You can stand. Let's just stand. Whoa. You know, some of you have had an experience a long time ago, long. So much so that, that the things that you're experiencing now are just simply repetitions and there's no meaningful life. There's no real encounters with God. Yeah, all you have are the memories of encounters with God. So I'm not saying you, you didn't have this before, but, but you know in your life, I need this, I got to have this. I can tell you this, that there, there is no awakening coming without this. If it's not by might and not by power, but by his spirit, then guess what? The Holy Spirit has to be preeminent in what he's about to release. He has to be preeminent. It's not going to be by your energy, your good wisdom, your great teaching, how many times you've watched every YouTube video of Bill Johnson or anybody else. It's going to be because you met God. God. That you received your commissioning and your orders from God. That you received the power from God. That it didn't matter if if, if anybody laid hands on you. 
it was God who laid hands on you. That there was something that happened this one night, this one day, this one day driving in my car where the Holy Spirit comes on you and you just, and you began realizing, I feel his presence all over me. I feel him. I feel him. That's what God wants for you. He wants it for you right now. Some of you, right now, the Holy Spirit's moving on you. You can feel his presence on your body. Let him, just let him come. Let him come. Let him come. Let him fill you. Let him fill you. Let him fill you. Ask him. Say, Lord, give me more. I, I, want, I want more. Lord, I want to get off the waiting bench. And I, wa I want to be ready. I want to be filled. I want to be overcome and overwhelmed by your presence. Overwhelmed, overwhelmed, overwhelmed. Whoa. Whoa. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord, let it come, let it come, let him 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 come. Holy Spirit, breathe, breathe, breathe. Yeah, breathe, 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 Lord, birth. Lord, tonight, Lord, birth, birth by your Holy Spirit, birth, birth, birth. Birth, Lord. Birth, Lord. Lord, what you did the other night just in, in, in Kingston, Father, where, where, where there was literally an explosion that happened in the room that everyone heard. Yes, Lord. Let it come. Let him come. More, Lord. Let it increase. Let it increase. Let it increase. Let it increase. Let him increase. Let him increase. Deeper, 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 deeper. Deeper. Deeper, Lord. There he comes, there he comes, there he comes. Let him come, let him come, let him come. Let him come all over you. Let him come, let him begin. Let, let him begin the nightly visitations. Yes, Lord, let him begin. Nightly visitations, nightly visitations. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Listen, I want to here, here's what I'm going to, here's what I'm going to ask. I, I know that some of you, some things began. I, I could feel some things happening, but I also know that some of you, this is something that you have to do. If there's one thing I've understood about the ministry of the Holy Spirit is that most often he's wanting it to happen with us alone. He wants to grab you. Now, he can come. I understand that. But there's something where he wants to commune with you. He wants to take you to places that could never happen in a group. He wants to visit you and overwhelm you and take you further. And as he begins coming on you, listen, if this is in your car, don't go home. Just keep driving. I'm, I'm dead, I'm very serious, not dead serious, I'm alive spirit, serious. If in the middle of the night he wakes you up, do not second guess that it's him. Say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get up, I'm going to go. I got to go stand somewhere where it's cold, I'll do that, I don't care. But I want you, God, right now, I want you. If you're touching me right now, I want you to come. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You ready? Invoke his presence. You know what that means? Holy Spirit, come on me. Come on me. Ask him. Come on me. Fill 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 me. 
Fill me. Fuller, 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 fuller. Lord, Lord, let us start where Finney finished, Lord. With a shadow, with, with a presence that could impact 90 miles. 90 miles. Lord, let us begin there. Let there be people in this room, Father, where the Spirit of God comes before they ever get there. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. There it is. 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 That, that, that young kid back there right by the steps. Yeah, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You. Yeah. Yeah, the Lord's all over you. Jesus is all over you. Can you feel his presence? Can you feel him? Yeah, I'm speaking to you. Don't turn. No. Yes. The Lord is all over you. There's a crazy call of God on your life. To, to release the kingdom of God, to release Jesus everywhere. And Lord, right now, tonight, Lord, I'm asking that you begin waking him up with your spirit. Father, you begin speaking to him. You begin giving him dreams and visions and encounters, Lord, with angels and with you. Lord, release that all over his life. All over his life. Yeah, more, Lord. More, Lord. My bro right here. Right here, this guy. Guess what? Lord says, man, the enemy terrorized you. Literally. Literally just terrorized your life. And it was like he kept coming and wouldn't stop. He just wouldn't stop. But the Lord, the Lord says that he's going to cause you to become... Uh, 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 a Holy Ghost, you know, what's her name? I can't think of her name. Christine Kane. Like Christine Kane, a, a Holy Ghost terrorist. That you're going you're gonna to begin giving, and I don't normally do things like that, but begin releasing the Spirit of God through your life with power. That lives are about to be changed. The Lord, the Lord says, even now, in this recent, this recent turn, the Lord says, do not turn back. Do not turn back. The Lord says, I'm pulling you forward. Right now, what you're feeling right now in your belly, that's the Holy Spirit. He's waking that up right now. Right now. So I release right now. Right now, the Spirit of God all over you. Lord, fill him up right now. By your Spirit, Lord, overwhelm him. Right now, I'm asking God right now, right now, right now. Sal, put your hand on his stomach right there. Put your hand on his stomach. Yeah, right there, right there. And I just release right now the Holy Spirit all over you, in you, through you, all over you, fill you that there will be a breakthrough, that this is, you've asked God, you said, God, when will this ever stop? Will it ever stop? Can I, can I, can I get on something that everything will just stop and move forward? Tonight, Lord, tonight, Lord, we release that, Lord, all over our brother, and Lord, the call of God in his life, the call that won't quit, the call that won't quit, the call that won't quit. Lord, that he hears your voice nightly, that he hears your voice nightly. I release that, Lord, all over my brother right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Ah, whatever this thing is, Sal, put your hand over his kidneys in the back. Put your hand, yeah, right the back there. I just release complete healing and restoration right now. That where, where the enemy tried to steal and, and began putting things into your life and taking things from you and, and, and began creating situations that could be incredibly painful and longevity right now in Jesus name I cancel that I release healing all through that lower back and through those kidneys right now in Jesus name I cleanse them out in Jesus name right now 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 yes Lord 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 Come on, come on, come on. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.